All right, this is chapter number eight. This is cash and internal control. Again, these are overview of the objectives that I have in mind for each of our chapters. Uh, the first uh, objective is something called internal control. Obviously internal inside, so this is inside the company. And these are the controls that the company has over its assets. Uh, you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your liabilities. We would love for them to take our liabilities. But the company has to have control over its assets to assure themselves that people don't take them. Also, internal control is there to assure them that their revenues are accounted for and that their expenses are properly accounted for as well. So internal control's focus is going to be that of assets. We want to make sure that we protect our assets, that we want to ensure that our uh, accounting records are reliable. We want to promote efficiencies of our operations. And we want to make sure that people adhere to the policies of internal control. Uh, some of the things about internal control happen to be that we want to establish who is responsible for what. Example, if you're responsible for a vehicle and that vehicle disappears, who is the company going to talk to first? Well, you. Uh, therefore, we need to make sure that assets and those people that have them are responsible for them. The second thing is we need to maintain adequate records. That would be a part of internal control. Thirdly, part of internal control is we might bond our employees. That's buying insurance. If you have an individual that is dealing with cash or assets, you might bond them because if the individual takes those and steals them, you have insurance that you can collect against to uh, protect against that loss. The big aspect of internal control is going to be segregation of duties. You do not want one individual to handle the transaction in its entirety. Case in point, if I had a bookkeeper, let's say I'm a small business and I have a bookkeeper, somebody who records all the transactions, if that individual also wrote out the checks and mailed them, what that person could do is they could write out a check to themselves and take the money and in the books and records record it as an expense. I wouldn't catch it because I wouldn't be seeing the, the uh, uh, accounting records and I wouldn't be seeing the check. They could end up padding their salary quite handsomely. We wouldn't want that. So internal control or segregation of duties, if you segregate the duties out, then you're less likely to have that type of theft. Now in small businesses, it's very difficult to do that. Therefore, the owner has to take on a lot of responsibilities. Example, we would have the bookkeeper record the transaction. We might even have them make out the check. But the owner would sign the check, would look at the invoice that supported the check, and would mail the check. That way the bookkeeper could not make the check out to themselves and pocket the cash. Other aspects of internal control would be, uh, as we said, dividing responsibilities, uh, performing regular and independent reviews. Maybe we'd have an external auditor come in occasionally and look over and trace out the transactions to make sure they were valid. So internal control inside the business, these are uh, controls we have to safeguard assets. We're not safeguarding liabilities because, again, people don't walk off with our liabilities. So objective one, internal control. Objective number two is something called cash and cash equivalents. Now, when we look at the balance sheet and we look under assets, we see a category called cash. Cash is checks that we might have on hand that people have given us. It might be coins, it might be currency, could be cash in domestic accounts as well as foreign accounts. But cash is much more than that. We have something called cash equivalents. And these are very short-term investments that when we acquire that, uh, they were very close to maturity, so close that any fluctuation in interest does not change the value of the security.
So you need to know that it's within three months of the maturity date when we acquire it. And it's readily convertible to cash. Example would be United States government securities that are within uh, 30 days, excuse me, not 30 days, but three months of their maturity would be a cash equivalent. So when you look at the balance sheet, that cash equivalent would not be an investment, it would be ca categorized under cash. The third objective is control over cash. And I'm only going to mention these and then we'll do some problems, a fair number of problems in these areas. One would be cash receipts. A lot of times, let's say a restaurant or any place that has to make change, uh, they're going to end up making a mistake. And so they're going to be either over or under in their cash till. That's called cash over or cash short. We need to know how to record that. That's going to necess necessitate a journal entry. We're also going to have something called petty cash. And we'll do some journal entries there. You need to know how to do that. And then bank reconciliation. You will need to know that. So on the exam, a lot of the exam is going to be over control of cash. Cash over, cash short, petty cash, and bank reconciliation. The final area that we happen to have in this particular chapter, the final objective, is going to be uh, purchase, uh, how to account for purchases. We have two methods. And this is in your text on page 338, appendix 8B. And I will want you to read that, and I will want you to know that. And this is the gross method versus the net method. So far in this class, we have been using the gross method. When somebody buys uh, something, and they're willing to pay you uh, uh, money for that, or you buy something. Uh, actually, it's when you buy something. When you buy something for $1,000, we've been recording the purchase at $1,000. But what if ultimately you take a discount? The net method would stay, instead of recording it gross, up front, you record it at the net, what you expect to pay for it in the end. And we will work some problems there. So what are the objectives? The objectives are here on the board. And they are the internal control, cash and cash equivalents, control over cash, which is cash over cash short, petty cash, bank reconciliation, and the gross method and the net method of accounting for, and I want to stress, because I. In the discussion there, I, I may have misled you slightly. The gross method and net method as far as purchases of goods. Not the sale, but the purchases of goods. We normally record them at gross. We will be recording them at either gross or net. Those are our objectives in chapter number eight.